Good day, ladies and gentlemen. This is MC Squared Coaching Center, and I'm Engineer Melvin Jan Habla Banizuelo. And continuation po ito ng word problems na nililecture ko po. This is word problems part 4 ng civil service exam mat PH. So I hope uh, magsama-sama po tayo. So I will discuss worded problems dito po sa, sa video na ito. So again, ang pagsusolve ko po ng problem dito is shortcut techniques. I will try to solve the easiest way or the fastest way to solve problem. Kaya, uh, makinig po mabuti kasi may mga problem po dito na isusolve po natin without using equations. Okay? So, again, good day. This is Engineer Melvin Jan Habla Banzuelo. So, this is Word Problems Part 4. Okay? So, let's start now for our problem number 1. Okay, so this is a problem number one. Ito po yung unang example natin. Uh, unang problem na isusolve po natin dito sa CSE Math Review Word Problems Part 4. Okay, so basahin ko po yung problem. Uh, uh, before ko po babasahin yung problem, take note guys na ang solution ko po sa pag-solve dito is I will try to, I will try to solve this problem or the problems na i-introduce ko po as easy, easiest way or fastest way to solve the problem. Okay? Uh, although, the mathematics known po natin yung math is pag mag-solve po tayo ng math problems is we will use equations in order for us to solve or to get the, the yung tinatanong sa problem. Okay? So, kung dito class, I will try to solve problems na ano po, na reverse method. Ang sinabi ko, pag sinabi ko pong reverse method is, uh, aatakihin natin yung problem galing sa choices para makuha po natin yung tamang sagot. Or para malaman po natin yung tamang choice na sagot. Okay? So, basahin ko po. The sum of ages of 5 children born at the intervals of 3 years each is 50 years. What is the age of the youngest child? Okay. The sum of ages of 5 children born at the intervals of 3 years each is 50 years. What is the age of the youngest child? Is it letter A, 4 years? Letter B, 8 years? Letter C, 10 years? D, none of these. Ulitin ko po. Letter A, 4 years? Letter B, 8 years? Letter C, 10 years? And D, none of these. Now, uh, let's try to analyze the problem. Sabi nga dito, sa problem daw, merong limang bata. Okay? May limang bata na pag i-add mo yun, yung limang ed yung edad ng limang bata, ang total ng, ng edad nila, ng lima, is 50 years. And yung difference or interval ng edad ng limang bata is 3 years each. Ang ibig sabihin ng 3 years each, Halimbawa, if 10 years old ako, uh, 10 years old yung isang bata, ako tuloy. Halimbawa, ako yung bata, yung next na bata is 13. And then, yung next na bata is 16. Next na bata is 19. So, yun kasi yung ibig sabihin na intervals of 3 years each. Okay? So, yung difference naming dalawa, or yung difference ng edad ng dalawang bata ay 3 years. Now, let's try to solve this problem class using the reverse method. Unahin natin gamit ang reverse method. Okay. So, sa reverse method, sabi sa problem class is, ang tinatanong sa problem is the, what? Tinatanong sa problem is the youngest child. Okay? Youngest child yung tinatanong. So, ibig sabihin, yung nasa choices ay Yung mga edad na to is possible edad ng mga youngest child. Okay? Edad po yan ng mga youngest child. So therefore, paano natin naatakihin if that is edad ng youngest child? etong mga edad na ito class, mag a lang tayo ng 3 dito. Pag mag a tayo ng 3 dito, kasi nga, bakit 3? Sinabi nga, intervals of 3 years each. Okay? 
intervals of 3 years each. Ayan o, oh, intervals of 3 years each. So, mag add lang tayo ng 3 dito, makukuha na natin yung edad ng isang bata. Okay? Ng isang bata. So, unahin po natin si letter A. Si letter A, kung ang youngest ay 4, ang sunod na bata is 4 plus 3 is, that is, 7. And then, kung 7 yung sunod na bata, ang sunod naman ng 7, 7 plus 3 ay 10. Then, kung 10, ang sunod naman sa 10 na bata, yung, edad, yung bata na may edad na 10, is 10 plus 3, that is 13. And ang sunod naman sa 13, 13 plus 3, that is 16. Okay? So, mag add pa ba tayo ng 3? Hindi na. Kasi nga, limang bata lang yung nasa problem. So, limang bata lang yung nasa problem. So, five children born. So, no need na tayo mag add ng, ng, isa pang, ng isa pang bata. So, it, kung aatakihin natin una si letter A, ang youngest daw is 4, ang sunod is 7, sunod 10, sunod 13, and sunod 16. Paano nakuha ang 7? 4 plus 3, 7. 7 plus 3, 10, 10 plus 3, 13, 13 plus 3, that is 16. Bakit plus 3? Kasi nga, sabi sa problem, intervals of, ito, intervals of 3 years each. So, kaya, nag add tayo ng 3. Ang next naman natin class is etong what? etong 50 years. Sinabi sa problem na ang add ng edad ng limang bata ay 50, 50 years. So therefore, pag i-add natin yung ages nila ng, ng, ng limang bata, ibig sabihin to 4 plus 7, tapos ipa-plus natin ito, i-add natin lahat yung age nila, dapat mag-equal yan ng 50. If ever mag equal yan ng 50, then therefore, correct answer si letter A. If hindi nga, hindi mag equal ng 50 ng summation ng age nila, then therefore, proceed tayo kay letter B. Okay, ganun lang yun. So, maswerte tayo if ever, pag add natin, lalabas 50, then therefore, tapos ang usapan, shade na tayo ng correct answer. So, ganun po yung pag-attack natin sa problem sa actual exam. So it will it will not consume ano na mahabang oras okay So let's try to add So let's try to add 4 plus 7 that is 11 11 plus 10 that is 21 21 plus 13 that is 34 34 plus 16 that is 50 So therefore since nag equal to 50 Okay, nag-equal to 50 yung sum nila class. Then therefore, anong ibig sabihin? Okay, anong ibig sabihin? Sagot ba si letter A or hindi? Okay, yun yung tanong. Sagot ba si letter A or hindi? So, it means the correct answer in this problem is letter A. Then therefore, the age of the youngest child is 4 years. Okay, yung age ng youngest child is for years. So, ganun lang. Ganun lang kadali class and shade mo na kaagad yung letter A sa choices. Okay. Now, ang tanong, paano po ba siya isolve using equation? Yun kasi yung traditional approach or traditional way natin on how to solve a given problem sa mathematics. Okay. So, take note na yung ages nila, let the ages of children be x x yung youngest, then sunod ng, ng youngest is x plus 3, kaya, kasi syempre plus 3, and then plus 3 ka dito, kaya naging 6 po ito siya, ito yung pangatlo, plus 3 ka naman dito, kaya naging x plus 9 siya, plus 3 ka naman dito, kaya naging 12, x plus 12 siya. Kasi nga, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 3, 9, 9 plus 3, that is 12. And then, i-add natin tong lahat ng ages nila, that is equals to 50. Kasi nga, yun yung sabi sa problem. The sum of ages ng children ay 50 years. And then, x 
plus x plus x plus x plus x. Ilang x yan? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, 5x. And then, 3 plus 6, 9. Plus 9, 18. Plus 12, that is 30. Then, 30. So, 50 minus 30, that is 20. Okay? So, kaya 20 yung naiwan. Klaro? So, 3 plus 6, 9. Plus 9, 18. Plus 12, uh, 18 plus 12, that is 30. So, 30 itong summation nila nito. And then, transpose to the other side of the equation, 50 minus 30, that is, that is what? That is 20. So, lagay ko dito, ha, 50 minus, uh, minus 30. Okay? So, 50 minus 30, that is 20. Then, 20 divided by 5, that is x equals to 4. So, therefore, the age of the youngest child is 4 years. So, in this problem, uh, sinol po natin siya, natin siya using reverse method and then sinol ko din po siya using equation. So, therefore, the correct answer here sa problem na, na ito, that is letter, letter A. Okay? So, wala na po bang tanong? If, again, if may tanong po, po kayo, class, wag po mahiyang mag-message po sa Facebook or sa Messenger. So, I'm willing po to help. Whatever, ano po, kung may, may isang problem kayo na encounter sa mathematics sa pag-re-review uh, po natin, and uh, kailangan po nyo ng tulong, the shortcuts or the easiest way on how to solve this, that problem, uh, you can PM me po. And then, uh, I will try my best to help you po uh, sa solution or kung paano po siya isolve the easiest way to solve the, the problem. Problem number two, what decimal of an hour is a second? Okay, what decimal of an hour is a second? So, is it letter A 0 0.0025, letter B 0 0.0256, Letter C, 0 0.00027. Letter D, 0 0.000126. Okay. So, sinabi niya, what fraction of an hour is a second? So, paano natin siya atakin, class? Yung one second ba, ano po siya sa kabuuan ng isang oras? Okay. So, ganito po siya. Take note of that na... Ito yung fraction, 1 second, ano po siya sa isang oras? So, therefore, para makuha natin yung fraction, so, 1 second is to 1 hour, kailangan yung hour makonvert natin into seconds. Take note that 1 hour is 60 minutes, and 60 minutes, that is, uh, and 1 minute, that is 60 seconds. So, ang may iwan na lang dito na unit class is second. So, cancel po natin yung hour, cancel po natin yung minutes. So, second over second, so may iwan na lang, second, makancel yung second, then therefore makuha natin yung decimal of an hour, or what decimal of an hour is a second. Okay? So, cancel yan lahat class, that is 1 second over 3,600 seconds, and yung result po niyan, cancel po natin yung dalawang seconds, 1 divided by 3,600, yung result po niyan is 0 0.00027. So, the correct answer here is letter, letter C. Okay? Problem number three. Three candidates contested an election and received uh, 1,136, 7,636, and 11,628 votes respectively. What percentage of the total votes did the winning candidate get? Is it letter A, 57%, letter B, 60%, letter C, 65%, letter D, 90%. Ulitin ko po, three candidates contested an election in an election and received 1,136, 7,636, and 11,628 votes respectively. What percentage of the total votes did the winning candidate get? Is it letter A, 57%, letter B, 60%, letter C, 65%, letter D, 90%. Okay? Now, winning 
a percentage of the total votes did the winning candidate get. So, ali, sa tatlong, tatlong ito po dyan class, alin po dyan yung boto ng winning candidate? So, yung boto ng winning candidate is etong 11,628. So, therefore, ang tanong, what percentage na ang etong 11,628, ano, ano po siya in percent or in percentage, what percentage po ito siya sa total number of na nagboto? So, in concept class, para makuha natin yung ilan ang nagboto is we will just add up this itong tatlong boto na na receive. So, 1,236 plus 7,636 plus 11,628. So, ma para makuha natin yung ilan ang kabuuan na nagboto sa election. And then, 11,628 divided by the total number of votes. Then, times 100 para makuha po natin yung percentage. So, ganito po siya. Total number of votes pulled, pulled 1,136 plus 7,623 plus 11,628. So, ang total po niyan is 20,400. Sa kabuuan, meron pong uh, bumoto na 20,400. Ang tanong, Uh, what percentage of the total votes, so total votes is 20,400, did the winning candidate get? Yung winning candidate, ang nakuha po niyang boto is 11,628. So therefore, 11,628 divided by 20,400, yun po yung fraction ng winning candidate sa total number of votes. So therefore, the required percentage is 11,628 divided by, ito po yung uh, uh, boto ng winning candidate. Ito naman po yung total number of votes pull, pulled na naboto. So 11,628 over 20,400 times 100. Bakit nagmultiply tayo ng 100 para makuha natin siya in percentage form? So equals 57%. So therefore, the correct answer here is letter A. Okay? So again, class, yung sinasabi ko po, if may tanong, I hope klaro po yung pagkaka-explain ko po sa problem na ito. Again, if may tanong po kayo, wag po mahiyang hanapin po ako sa messenger. Type nyo lang po yung full name ko po. And then, uh, message po kayo or mas maganda, screenshot po yung, yung specific na tanong ninyo para naman uh, matulungan ko po kayo. Okay? So, alimbawa, pinapanood po ninyo itong video ito and then may follow-up question kayo. Screenshot nyo po. Send nyo po sa messenger. Pakilala po kayo na you're one of my subscribers. And again, wag pong uh, kalimutang mag-subscribe again uh, para if may updates na naman, if may maidagdag akong new lecture, ma-update po kayo. Click, click subscribe and yung the bell bell button para ma-notify po kayo if ever may bago po akong upload. Okay? So, yun po yung sa problem number 3 ng CS, CSE Math Review PH Word Problems Part 4. So, thank you. Thank you for watching and I hope na uh, patuloy po kayong mag-subscribe or patuloy po ninyong uh, tangkilikin itong YouTube channel ko po. Yung next topic ko po is CSE Math Review, Word Problems Part 5 naman po tayo. Now class, if ever may request po kayo na worded problems sa mathematics dito sa civil service, Halimbawa, nag-re-review uh, po kayo at meron po kayong gustong ipasolve sa akin the simplest way or the easiest way or the fastest way to solve the problem, pwede po ninyong i-message po sa akin and then I will try my best na uh, ma-discuss po siya through my channel po. Okay? So, before mag-end po ako class, uh, I'll make an announcement. Uh, sa mga, sa mga nag-re-review po, lalo po nang nasa Davao City po, Uh, if ever, if gusto nyo po akong uh, mamit and gusto po ninyo akong maging instructor sa review, I will be one of the lecturers sa isang review center dito sa Dabao. So, ang review po nila sa CS, sa civil service nila na review ay we will uh, mag-start po ngayong February 8. So, 
sa uh, ibang subscribers. I hope may subscriber po ako dito na, na nag-enroll po sa kanila. And I'm, I'm excited na mamit po kayo. Pakilala po kayo na ako po, isa po ako sa subscriber ni New Sir. So, I'm again, I'm based here in Davao. So, that's why uh, tuturo po ako sa isang review center po dito sa sa Davao. So, yung review center po yan, that is the RGO, RGO Review Center sa Davao City. Yung office po ng RGO, if may hahabol po na review, uh, lalo na po yung mga titake na mga taga-Davao, magtitake ng civil service review ngayong March 15, 2020. And if ever gusto nyo pong humabol sa review, and, and, and if ever gusto nyo pong mamit, and may gusto po kayo ipaturo personally, or magpa-coach personally, uh, I will, ano po, I will uh, lecture po. I'm one of the lecturer po sa RGO Review Center. This is a review center for psychology. But then, uh, mag-open po sila ng uh, civil service review po. This is the first batch po ng, ano nila, ng civil service review. So, uh, that is RGO Review Center Davao. And if mag-enroll or habol po kayo for enrollment, Uh, yung office po nila nasa Rizal Street uh, harap ng uh, parking lot ng Pilam Building yung yung review center nila basta yung office nila sa ng review center and yung klase po ng RGO Review Center Davao is every Saturday and Sunday starting February 8, 2020 so pag Saturday po 8am to 5pm and pag Sunday naman is 8am to 12 noon And I'm happy to announce na ako po yung lecturer sa mathematics ng ng civil service review nila. And I'm, and I'm excited na malaman if ever na merong isa dito na subscriber ko po sa channel ko po. So the, the RGO Review Center is meron ding free grand final coaching on March 7 and 8. 2020. Okay? So, pag sinabing coaching, we will help you ano po, to be na makondition yung mind ninyo sa review. And then, let's uh, discuss mga possible na lalabas or not, not totally not possible lalabas. Yung mga questions na malapit lang sa mga common na lumalabas sa isang civil service uh, uh, exam. Okay? So, I hope to meet you personally, lalo na yung mga taga-Davao sa review center, sa RGO review center po. And if hindi po ako nagkakamali, basta I'm one, basta ang sure lang po is ako po yung lecturer sa mathematics nila. Okay? So that's RGO review center Davao. And if ever mag-enroll kayo again, nasa Rizal Street lang po ng Davao City, harap po ng, ng uh, uh, parking lot ng, ng Pilam building. Okay? Or ng Pilam. Okay, so again, thank you for watching. Okay, thank you for watching, and I hope na patuloy po kayo ng mag-subscribe or patuloy po tayo, ah, patuloy po kayo ng pag-support sa channel ko po. And I hope to to see you again in my next topic, CSE Math Review Word Problems Part Five. Okay, thank you and have a nice day.